Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's take a look and see how a torque is applied to a gyroscope that is not spinning. Normally a gyroscope would have a spinning disc here, which would be, let's say, spinning in this direction, but let's call that omega, the angular velocity at this moment, zero. Assuming that the rod here that supports the gyroscope has no mass for the time being, it's supported here by this post, and the r, the distance to the place where the force is acting, let's call that this distance here, this is called the position vector r, and then the weight of the of the gyroscope is acting downward. Uh, let me use a red pen here. So the weight is acting downward from the center mass. This would be the force, which is equal to mg, and that, of course, is a vector. Now notice that if you use your right-hand rule and you want to find the torque acting on this, the direction of the torque would be this way for the position vector, this way for the force vector, and then the torque would be acting into the board, assuming that this of course, I, I drew the, the disc kind of at an angle, but assume it to be like this so that the torque would be acting into the board. But instead of the gyroscope turning in this direction because the torque, the gyroscope is going to turn in this direction. So what would you expect? And you could say that the torque, by definition, if you want to find the magnitude of the torque, by definition is equal to the force times the perpendicular distance from the point of rotation to the line of action of the force and the force is equal to mg, and the distance would be equal to r. That means that the torque, the magnitude of the torque, is equal to mgr. We also know that the torque causes an angular acceleration. We know that from Newton's second law, we can write F equals ma, and the rotational equivalent to Newton's second law can be written as the torque is equal to the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. If you plug in the value mgr for the torque, mg times r, and then for the moment of inertia of this gyroscope, now when the gyroscope is not spinning, it's just a fixed object, just like a, a non-moving object, and it's sitting here, you can imagine that the force of gravity would pull the gyroscope down like this. The moment of inertia, assuming that the rod here has no mass, and we know that the gyroscope has mass over here, the moment of inertia would be m, the mass, times r squared, and I should use a small r here like I did in the drawing, r squared, that would be the moment of inertia times alpha. Now notice that we can simplify this by canceling out a mass and one of the radii, that means that g is equal to r times alpha, or alpha, the angular acceleration, is equal to g divided by r. Now, when something is rotated, there's a relationship between the angular acceleration and the tangential acceleration. In other words, at the very moment that this is let go, there will be an acceleration downward because there is a, an angular acceleration in this direction called alpha. So if you want to find out how fast initially the gyroscope will be accelerating, we could then say that the relationship between the tangential acceleration is equal to the radius arm, r, times the angular acceleration replacing alpha by a over r because we could say a divided by r is equal to the angular acceleration replacing that we could say a over r is equal to g over r and so a equals g that means that initially in a situation like this and we place a gyroscope there which is not spinning and let go at the very moment assuming of course there's no mass in the rod here the gyroscope would accelerate downward at the acceleration equal to gravity, like in free fall, but then of course, as the gyroscope begins to spin around because it's locked in right here, then the acceleration would indeed be relative to the alpha, which would change, it would not stay a constant alpha, and that would depend upon the force acting in this way, and then the distance from here to the line of action of the force. So it would be slightly different in that case as the gyroscope would continue. Initial though, the acceleration would be equal to gravity, it would be in free fall. Now, what happens when we make the gyroscope spin at some angle of velocity? If the angle of velocity gets very large, then the gyroscope will have a very large angular momentum. And if it has a very large angular momentum, remember that the angular momentum doesn't like to change, because momentum is always conserved, unless there's a force acting on it, and let's see in the next video when we start making the disc spin, some very strange things begin to happen. So stay tuned, watch the next video, and see what would happen when the gyroscope begins to spin.